Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to present our data on the Sentinel Prostate Cancer Platform. This has been a major collaborative effort involving a number of scientists, including Martin Tenniswood and Greg DiRienzo and Winnie Wang, and a number of clinical collaborators. These are our disclosures. The Sentinel platform is based on an analysis of a large number of urinary exosomal small non-coding RNAs. This consists of several types of microRNAs that are contained within these urinary microvesicle exosomes. The urine is pre-DRE. Urinary exosomes contain important biologic material, including large numbers of microRNAs. And these RNAs provide a snapshot of the disease status of the tissue from which the exosomes are derived. And with respect to the prostate, it's a molecular assessment of the disease status of the entire gland. It gets around the issue of biopsy and sampling. And it includes the molecular contribution of small high-grade tumors that are often missed by systematic or MRI and targeted biopsies. This is an EM of what these urinary microvesicles or exosomes look like. They're very simple structures, but they are packaged to contain non-randomly important biologic material. And there's a great deal of research into exosomal microRNA that indicates these sequences reflect the presence or absence of cancer. The initial work that was done a number of years ago was to look at the independent predictive value of around 10,000 different microRNA sequences and rank them according to the likelihood that they are associated with cancer being present or not and higher grade cancer being present or not. The most predictive 442 of these roughly 10,000 sequences were then selected for further analysis. The technology that has been developed to perform this assay involves real-time PCR on an open array set of plates that contains probes for 224 microRNAs and 224 small nucleolar RNAs. And each patient's analysis involved a total of 75,000 data points. 23 patients can be run on one set of plates. It's a fairly quick system that takes a few days. For each group of 23 patients, four plates are utilized plus some control samples. This is not a multiplex system. Each RNA is interrogated as an independent assay. This is our initial results that were published last year in the Journal of Urology. On the left, you see the results for the prediction of any cancer being present, no cancer in black, cancer present in green. On the right, you see the assay differentiating between, in those patients who have cancer, grade group one versus grade group two and higher. The separation of the readouts and the correlation with the biopsy was really remarkable. And this is reflected in the area under the curve that you see here, approximately 0.98 for the presence or absence of cancer and about 0.96 for low grade versus higher grade cancer. Now this raised an immediate question, how could this assay predict the results of biopsy so well when biopsy itself doesn't correlate that closely with the extent and grade of cancer that's present in the prostate? I'll come back to that shortly. The assay as it's now constituted is an iterative analysis. And what this means is that the 442 microRNA sequences are weighted differently in three separate stages. Step one is to ask the question, is there any cancer present or not? NPEPC is no pathologic evidence of prostate cancer. In other words, a negative biopsy versus any cancer present. The patients who have cancer are then re-interrogated using the same sequence. This is done in silico but different weightings applied to the different sequences to determine the likelihood of grade group one versus grade group two to five cancers. And step three, along the same lines, again, different weightings of these 422 sequences to differentiate grade group two from grade group three and higher. You can see the potential power of an assay 
that has the ability to stratify patients according to risk with this degree of granularity. And this just gives you a more graphical idea of how this iterative set of computational layers works. At step one, here are patients who have no pathologic evidence of prostate cancer versus grade group one. Here is grade group two to five. This is the group who have negative biopsies. And you can see there is quite good separation, not complete separation. There's a few outliers. Uh, and then the second computational layer takes only those patients who have molecular evidence of cancer. In other words, a positive readout from grade one to five, and again, stratifies them between grade group one in blue and grade group two to five in these sectors on the right. And again, you can see the degree of separation is really quite remarkable. This is a summary of the key validation data that we have to date. And this is based on 806 patients. And I'll just take a couple of minutes to go through this in detail. This involves of the 806 patients, 373 or about 45% had a negative biopsy. And these were patients at risk for prostate cancer. This is data that was accrued over the last approximately four years. And during that period, there's been a shift from systematic to image with targeted biopsies. And so some of these patients had systematic, some had systematic plus targeted. Around a quarter of the patients had grade group one, about 15% had grade group two, and around 20% had grade group three to five. So how well did the assay perform in this group of patients? The first question is the sensitivity for clinically significant cancer. So those are the patients who had grade group two or higher disease on their biopsy. And this was demonstrated with a positive test for intermediate to high risk molecular evidence of prostate cancer on the assay. And 91% of the patients who's, who had a positive biopsy for significant disease had a positive readout on the test. The second issue is the specificity. And this is where it gets a little more problematic. The specificity was 66%. So there was an apparent false positive rate that you see here where the assay readout was for intermediate to high grade disease, Gleason two or higher would be the correlation. And yet the biopsy was negative. As I mentioned, it's well known that, for example, about 30% of men who have grade group one diagnosed on systematic biopsy harbor higher grade cancer. If patients have targeted plus systematic biopsy, this drops to around 15%. But uh, both of these are in the ballpark of the apparent false positive rate demonstrated in this assay. We have no way of knowing with certainty at this point to what degree these represent false positive assays and to what degree they represent a false negative biopsy and that the patient actually harbors higher grade cancer. But I, I think it's very plausible that a significant proportion of these 34% of apparent, apparent false positive cases were in fact false negative biopsies. Of the patients who had a completely negative biopsy, these 373 patients, about half actually had molecular evidence of prostate cancer, meaning a low intermediate or high readout from the assay. And finally, and perhaps most compellingly, the negative predictive value for clinically significant disease was 95%. This means that of the patients who had no molecular evidence of prostate cancer or a evidence of low risk disease, only 5% of those actually turned out to have grade group two or higher degree on biopsy. So we believe this data is quite compelling and really superior to other liquid biomarkers that have been described. There is a great deal of ongoing validation work in particular, uh, studies of patients who have provided urine and then gone on to have radical prostatectomy are currently underway 
to address this question of the false positive results and whether they reflect false negative biopsy or a true false positive of the assay. We're also closely studying a group of patients on active surveillance. And the issue here is to assess the performance of the assay as a component of dynamic risk profiling. So to repeat the assay every three to six months, these are mainly patients with grade group one disease monitored over time. And the hope and the expectation is that if they initially have a negative readout for significant disease and the assay converts to a positive readout suggesting higher grade disease is present, that uh, this will really enhance the ability to follow patients on active surveillance without the need for serial biopsies. So to summarize, the Sentinel PCC4 assay based on sequencing 442 small non-coding RNAs secreted in urinary exosomes is a non-invasive molecular test. It doesn't require a DRE. It provides high specificity and sensitivity based on the data I've shown for the presence or absence of any cancer for low grade versus intermediate to high grade cancer and for intermediate to even higher grade cancer. The test is a rapid turnaround assay that takes roughly a week to complete. It is highly scalable for large volumes of patients. Further validation studies are ongoing. Thank you very much for your attention and I'd be happy to take questions.